Have you been good boys and girls this year? If you were, then Santa will have brought you a brand spankin' shiny new Darktable 3.0. There is a heap of new features and some tweaked existing features. Let's dive on in. Hi, and welcome to episode 54 of Understanding Darktable. Couple of things I want to get to just before we dive into this. One, yes, I'm using the A7 III to shoot my headshot because I just thought it's worth changing it up a bit. Second, this is not going to be a video about how to use the new features. This video is simply going to be a summary of the things that have changed and the things that are new in Darktable 3. All of those things which require some explanation will end up with a video of their own and given that I'm off work for the next week and a half, hopefully I'll get a few videos out in the next few days. That's the aim anyway. All right, with that said, let's dive on in. Okay, so as we dive into this, I am going to use one of the documents relating to the release notes from GitHub as my roadmap. So jumping right in, the major features First up, a brand new GUI. This is more modern, fully redesigned and customizable via GTK and CSS. A new culling mode on the light table. It gives you a fixed number of consecutive images starting from the first selected or a set of selected images and it allows you to pan and zoom across them simultaneously. The number of displayed images can be set by the user and they can be navigated with the mouse wheel and the keyboard. Finally, it provides a comparison mode of images often requested. There's a new timeline view. This makes it possible to select a date range to display related images. And whilst it may not be immediately evident, you can control and mouse wheel to zoom in and out of that timeline view. A quite extensive rewrite of the light table view, including the film strip in the darkroom view, has been made to greatly improve the overall performance. The light table is now usable on 4K and 5K monitors. A new Filmic RGB module, which like the previous module Filmic, is designed to replace base curve, shadows and highlights, and other global tone mapping modules. This new version should be easier to use and it will reduce color casts. The old Filmic module is now deprecated and will only be available on images where it was previously used. So I guess if you like the old version of Filmic, you'll need to keep an install of 2.6 on your system so that you can access that module. But Aurelian has stated in his videos, which I will try and remember to put a link to in the description down below, that the code and the way this filmic rgb module works is essentially unchanged from the original it's really an overhaul of the ui with one exception and that is the color space in which it works a new module the tone equalizer has been created to merge the features of the zone system shadows and highlights and local tone mapping modules in a scene referred rgb space it brings an easy and safe way to remap tones locally, performing a quick zone-based dodging and burning using the zone system that Ansel Adams pioneered. There are new modules for RGB curve and RGB levels. They have modes for linked and independent RGB channels. The module Denoise Profiled has been greatly improved. It now offers high performance default settings in most cases. It is thus no longer necessary to use the two Chroma and Luma instances. In most cases, only one instance will be required. For images processed with Darktable 2.6 or earlier, it is possible to upgrade the module to the new processing algorithms via a checkbox in the module. A new module, 3D LUT, for handling 3D RGB LUT transformations. PNG, hold, clut, and cube files are supported. I will confess to having no knowledge of what that stuff does. 
A complete rework of the tagging module. It is now faster and more complete with a new hierarchical view. Possibility to set tags as private, to assign them to categories, or to even search synonyms. The export module now has an option to select which metadata to export. There's a new module called Basic Adjustments. This allows you to adjust the black level, exposure, highlight compression, contrast, middle grey, brightness and saturation. It also has an auto feature based on raw therapies auto levels that can work on the entire image or a user selected area. There's a new raster mask that allows you to copy a mask to other modules in the pixel pipe. There are some new keyboard shortcuts for the darkroom view. Shift Control T to show and hide the top panel. Shift Control L to show and hide the left panel. Shift Control R to show and hide the right panel. Shift Control B to show and hide the bottom panel between the image and the image banner. Shift Control H will show or hide the histogram in the top right of the right hand panel. Shift Control N will show and hide the thumbnail image in the top left of the left hand side panel. Control F, which has always been there, to show and hide the film strip at the bottom of the darkroom view. And Control H for the top banner from the logo to the links to light table, dark room, print view, slideshow, etc. Also, the letter B will get rid of the borders at the top and bottom of the dark table UI. So if you never have a need for showing and hiding those top and bottom elements with the little white triangles, you can just use the B shortcut and they're gone forever. On the right hand side panel below the histogram and above the list of modules you will notice there is a new search module field. If you know the name of the module you want, simply start typing it in and it will be much quicker and easier to find. Masks have had a complete overhaul. You will notice that now instead of having the drop down menu to access the different mask types, there is now a series of icons across the bottom of the module. From left to right, they are disable the active mask, a uniform mask, a drawn mask, parametric mask, drawn and parametric mask, and the new raster mask. The history module has had a complete overhaul. Now, Darktable, like any raw development software, must run some default modules in order to allow a raw file to be interpreted as an image for the user to view. Part of that process is that there are some things that just have to be done and will always be done. And in an effort to be transparent, Darktable now shows all of those things in the history module. They cannot be undone. You will notice that there is also on the right hand side of the history module some new icons. These involve a solid white circle or a solid white dot with a circle around it. Those are default modules that cannot be disabled. There are some modules which have what looks like the universal power symbol. These are modules that are turned on by default but can be disabled by the user if you so choose to. Then there are modules in a disabled state. That is the on off button has been disabled and the text of the module is in light gray instead of white. And finally, deprecated modules like the aforementioned filmic module if they exist, they will have an X icon to show that they have been deprecated. EXIF info has changed where it is displayed. It used to be displayed at the bottom of the histogram in the top right hand corner. It is now by default displayed at the bottom of the image you are currently working on. It's possible to customize the data displayed in this area in the dark table preferences. See the format of the image information line section of preferences. Uh, you can also change the position of this information line. 
Possible parameters for the format can be found in the Darktable manual. Changing these options requires a restart of the application in order for them to be applied. It's now possible to display a second image preview window via the dual screen icon at the bottom left of the darkroom image. This view allows you to select a different display profile from the main view for comparison. To do this, simply select it via a new menu accessible in the usual soft proofing and gamut verification options at the bottom right of the image in the main view. You can zoom in this new view via the mouse wheel. There is a new window that allows you to see all the shortcuts for whatever area of Darktable you're currently working in. So whether it's light table or darkroom view, you can press the H key and see a list of all the shortcuts. Now be aware this is case sensitive. If you have your caps lock key on, it will not work. It must be a lower case H. You can also press the Alt key to keep this panel active. So if you just need some time for your brain to soak in all of those keyboard shortcuts, just hold the Alt key down and that list will stay visible. And then simply press the H key again to get out of that. Preferences in Darktable 3 has had a complete overhaul as well. You will notice now there are headings that define certain preferences that are all related to each other so it makes searching for a particular preference that much easier because you can go by the headings to get an idea of where you're going to find the particular preference you're looking for. A new keyboard shortcut that has been introduced is Control z for undo and redo. Obviously almost every other application in the known universe uses Control z for undo so Darktable's kind of a little bit late to the party, but it is good for consistency's sake. This will apply to things like keywords, star rating, color labels, modifying of metadata, copy and paste, or removal of history and or styles. Now, for users of Darktable who've been with it for a while, you would be familiar with Z for toggling of a full screen preview of a single image, Shift Z to make that sticky and Control Z to show that with focus detection. Those keyboard shortcuts have now been remapped to the W key, so just be aware of that. Also, when you use the single image preview keystroke, which is now mapped to the W key, you can now pan and zoom around the image using the Control key and your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Another new thing in Darktable 3 is the leaning towards an entire workflow in the RGB color space. For an optimal use of this workflow, it is strongly recommended to activate in the input color profile module, the linear rec 2020 RGB working profile or linear pro photo RGB. It's also strongly recommended in this context to disable the base curve and the sharpen modules via the three new options of Darktable Preferences, tab Core Options, then Heading Quality. Okay, the biggie. Lots of people have been screaming out for this particular feature, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say... I'm not convinced that introducing this is a good idea. This is the ability to reorder the modules in the pixel pipe. Now, the developers of Darktable are guys who really understand the mathematics of what goes on in the development of a raw file into an image that we can view on our monitor. I guess what we should do here is run out that long banded quote of with great power comes great responsibility. If you do not understand how the modules are linked to each other and how one thing affects other things further in the pixel pipe, then you really should not reorder the pixel pipe. Leave it in the default mode. For those of you who really want to live on the edge, shift Control 
and drag and drop will allow you to alter the processing order of the pixel pipe. And that will be evident from the tab in the darkroom view, which shows you your active modules. This has always and still does show you the order of the pixel pipe, starting at the bottom and working towards the top. So if you want to reorder modules, control, shift, drag, drop. There you go. You have the tool. Don't complain if you get hurt using it. Some performance and visual improvements are also to be highlighted on the color picker on the left panel of the darkroom and the tone curve modules. More generally, many improvements have been made around the selection picker in various dark table locations. The original export to Picasa has been updated to Google Photos. And even though Darktable 3 has only just been hatched, the Darktable developers are already working on 3.0.1. Okay, so that's a quick run through of a lot of the new stuff that's in Darktable 3. There's probably one or two things that I've overlooked. My apologies for that. Like I said, I could not make this video a deep dive into how all of these new things work because it would have ended up being a three hour video. So it is my intent over the next week and a half, like I said, to crank out a bunch of videos dedicated to different parts of these new features. So bear with me. I will get them out as quick as I can. And you guys have yourselves a Merry Christmas, or I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will talk to you soon.